everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Riley. This week, we're going to go over the top five reasons why carpet pythons are my favorite snakes. So hang out with me and let's do this. So to help me demonstrate this here is going to be one of my breeder female tiger head exanic coastal carpet pythons. And reason number one why carpet pythons are my favorite is their beautiful variety. Now obviously coastals are known for a lot of grays, tans, some yellows and buckskins and with her head exanic influence you're getting more of the silver tones. They can be striped, banded, have florets on top with side striping highly highly variable head stamps i mean the, the the variety is endless they're called carpet pythons simply because that uh common name sort of came from like the variety of oriental rugs and carpets at the time uh, they're just endless variety of these animals based on where you find them they will look a little bit different they'll sort of uh match what their environmental needs are phenotypically so uh, tons and tons of variety in them. You have different subspecies, uh, full species, and you have morphs among that too. So there's a little something for everybody in carpet pythons. So there's just really no end to that variety. They might be one of the more highly variable snakes out there. And then what's not to love about a snake with a big old beautiful head like that? Huh? It's a big old muscly boofy head. Really cool. So they're beautiful snakes, come in a, an endless variety of colors. Yellows, blacks, reds, browns, you name it. Tons of pattern, tons of variety. So reason number one, they're some of the most variable snakes on the planet. So my second volunteer to help me demonstrate with today's video is this beautiful adult male coastal tiger head exanic sibling to the one you just saw and he's here specifically to help me exemplify reason number two why carpet pythons are some of the best snakes out there and that's their size you're looking at an average for the majority of them five to seven feet you can influence that a bit with feeding or lack thereof influencing some seasonal variation prey variety things like that and you can push them to big eight, nine foot monsters, but chances are they're not gonna see their 10th birthday. On the other hand, you can uh, withhold meals during certain times of the year naturally when prey availability might be low, like winter time. Um, you might feed males less, things like that. The last clip you saw was an adult female. This is an adult male, same age, same everything really. Um, and he's a fraction of the size. So granted, I could have probably influenced his size to be bigger if I fed him the same as her, but typically speaking, that's not necessary. A lot of people are probably sitting here going, well, what about the nine, 10 footers of cotton, you know, Southern Australia? There are some big ones over there. I'm just gonna specifically talk about uh, what we have here in the United States and specifically in the pet and, uh, breeding sort of world um, just you know here in our home so for the most part their size is going to average between five to seven feet that's not going to require a huge footprint of space at home mom and dad aren't going to be too upset probably a little bit much for a college dorm room but anything after that you're, you're pretty groovy so um, there's a lot of commercially available enclosures that uh, would be suitable size for an adult carpet python both male and female so Reason number two why I love carpets, their size. It's a fun size. Not too big, not too small. Pretty much a good size for everybody. Alrighty. So, the third reason why carpet pythons are my favorite is the temperament. Now, how many of you have heard that carpet pythons are bitey, they're not very friendly or they're nippy well 
they certainly can be. Um, as a breeder who's produced a couple hundred, at this point, I would say very few of them stay that way. Babies will hatch out nippy, but that's pretty typical. They're tiny and they've got to do that in order to defend themselves naturally. So instinctually, that's, that's what you want to see, a, a hardy defensive baby who's not uh, willing to just roll over and die. You want something that's willing to strike and defend itself, and ultimately those make the best feeders. And then naturally with some socialization and handling, they can become super adventurous, curious, inquisitive animals that are fun to handle. Um, as you've seen in the previous two clips, the adults that I, I brought out were not just sitting still, but they weren't running all over the place in an unmanageable fashion. So um, pretty cool to hang with. Once you socialize them, they're, they're very fun. Oftentimes you don't really have to do any work socializing them, especially if a, a small time breeder is where you're getting them from. Probably, you know, have the time to, to handle them once in a while. And even just, you know, the first few months of cleaning and taking care of animals, you're, you're spot cleaning, you're picking them up, you're doing all this stuff. You're gonna give them a lot of experiences with people. And as long as you, you know, don't exacerbate it, generally babies mellow out and then they stick with that behavior into adulthood. The one thing I will say is when lights go out and it's nighttime, whether there's food out or not, they have a very, very intense feeding response at night. So I definitely still keep hooks around. I tend not to handle animals at night uh, just to avoid accidental bites because they are very prey driven at night. But yeah, their temperament's wonderful. They're inquisitive. I trust the majority of my snakes passed off to people who've never handled them, strangers, kids, you name it. Um, and oftentimes I hear the most uh, excited exclamations of, of surprise from folks who had heard that they were nippy or bitey and then maybe took the plunge into one or, or held one for the first time. So it's really encouraging to hear that uh, maybe that stereotype that they're nippy and, and bitey snakes is, is slowly but surely fading away. So with that, number three reason why carpet pythons are my favorite is they have an excellent temperament and they are fun to handle. Reason number four that I find carpet pythons to be my favorite snakes is their hardiness. These are some of the toughest snakes you'll find you want to talk about harsh environments. Australia is widely regarded as a very tough place to live, known for all the sorts of venomous and dangerous critters that want to kill you, not to mention the tough, hot environments. Um, so who better to demonstrate that than a Brettles python, Morelia breadli, straight out of, uh, you know, some of the hottest, harshest terrain in Australia. Um, Anecdotally, these snakes really like it cold. Talk to any keepers that work with them in, in any sort of capacity with intent to breed or keep them naturally. They really enjoy the cold. They seek it out in the enclosure more often than not. And in order to successfully breed them and stimulate follicular genesis in females and spermatogenesis in males, you gotta get them really stinking cold. So this is a head stone wash male of mine and he's here to demonstrate as opposed to my bigger adults that are at the shop because they're getting cooled down into the 50s. So I've got a Govi reader over there um, in the back of the shop with them and it is hitting literally 50 degrees at night some nights. So with any luck, we'll have some good uh, success with breeding them, but it just goes to show you how tough some of these animals are. You hear a lot of Morelia keepers refer to the phrase that they're very forgiving of keeper error. Now, not to encourage negligence or poor husbandry, they are okay if you forget to feed them for a few weeks or you go out of town or something like that or a, a heating element isn't working for a couple days, whatever, you're not gonna have any issues. Um, definitely take care of your animals and mind your P's and Q's, but they're some of the toughest snakes you'll find. Very forgiving. Um, you can set them up in a variety of, of orientations, vertically, horizontally give them a lot of different stuff and, and they're pretty much gonna roll with it as long as they can get warm during the day, they're good. So reason number four why I love carpet pythons is they are some of the hardiest animals, some of the toughest snakes out there. All right, it's that time. The fifth and final reason why I absolutely love carpet pythons as demonstrated by this 
beautiful wild caught Papuan carpet is that these things always eat. Like almost always eat. The rare exception to that are new hatchlings when you're first getting them established. Some of them will be a little tricky. There's always that one or two in the bunch. But for the most part, these things are born to eat. Now in the wild, it's been studied and speculated that fresh hatchlings are gonna be eating on skinks and geckos and whatnot. But in the hobby, they very readily eat rodents for us. This animal literally being wild caught as a baby came in and I've had her for probably a year now, maybe more, um, has been taking rodents no problem, even for the importer who had her. And it just is a wonderful testament. There's nothing more frustrating to me than snakes that don't eat. Um, it's a waste of money, it, it, it's confusing, it can be really difficult to, uh, to be okay with for a first time keeper, a new keeper, a pet keeper, something like that. Somebody who wants an animal that you know, is just gonna reliably eat and they don't ever have to really worry or stress about it. So one of my favorite things is that these things will eat. You can give them a great variety of foods. You don't have to stick with rodents. You can give them things like chicks or quail. I know folks who've done tilapia or goldfish, uh, African soft furs, I mean, you name it. I've got some where just for fun, I'll switch up mice or rats or, you know, give them a, a chick here and there. They, they will happily take that and they don't really very often get stuck on food every you know every once in a blue moon you'll encounter like a the odd jungle that only wants mice or only wants live mice or something but there's always there's always one or two like that in in every group of, of snakes but for the most part and this is obviously very scientific 99% of the time these things are just garbage disposal snakes and will eat readily throughout the year so my fifth and final reason why I love carpet pythons is that these things always eat. And I love that. Nothing grinds my gears more than a snake that doesn't eat. So on that note, I highly consider if anybody is watching this and thinking about getting into carpet pythons for any reason whatsoever, leave a comment below, subscribe, this channel we do a lot of uh, carpet python content if you haven't figured that out yet it's kind of my my bread and butter so if you have any questions if you're interested in getting in into carpet pythons comment below I'm easy to find we can get you rolling on that journey so much love to heli guy serpents Chris Sexton one of my sponsors my very first sponsor out here doing his thing, making some beautiful 3D printed awesomeness out there. Go check him out. I'll have all his information below. Heli Guy Serpents, you're the man. Chris, thank you. And my other wonderful sponsor, Reptiles Express and PremiumCrickets.com. They are the best in what they do. Shipping, sending animals, bugs your way, all sorts of good stuff. You name it. They're running discount codes. Chris is too. So if you ever need anything from them, discount code Riley10 at, or Riley15 at, um, premiumcrickets.com, Riley50 at uh, reptilesexpress.com, and Riley10 at heliguyserpents.com. Lots of cool ways to save some money, take care of your animals, go get some animals, ship some stuff, you name it. And then, gotta give uh, give love to my Patreon fam. If you wanna join the, uh, the awesome community that we've got slowly growing, you can look me up under uh, Riley Jimison on Patreon. Pretty straightforward have all that information below and then last but certainly not least got to give love to uh, US Arc and US Arc Florida the only uh, legislative bodies out there fighting for our rights to keep these animals responsibly and respectfully they do a whole lot to support us so it's the least we can do to support them so much love to everyone thank you for tuning in see you all next week for some more uh, carpet python content